All right, all right, let's do this. Hey, everyone. Hola. How's everyone doing? Got back from a week's holiday. Ready to do some streaming again. Honestly, I've wrote like a bunch of stuff down. What we could be doing today, but I have no idea what we will actually be doing. So it's all going to be a surprise. Hey, Danny! How are you doing, Danny? Let's see. Um, I'll start with like a little update what I did in between, right? Um, because I think... Mm. Let's see. I think I did a little bit more work in between streams, and I think this was mostly the result of it, where I added I added like a new stone texture. Or I basically I refined the stone texture that I already had, and it's looking way better than before. So now we have two variations of this. One with like bigger chunks and then one with smaller chunks so that I can blend between the two, like you can see here. Gives us some variation. Looks way better than it was looking before. Let's actually see if I can bring up a comparison. Hey, John! Danny's cooking up dinner. Nice. I still need to try that recipe that we talked about like ages ago. That like chocolate rice recipe, I think, if I remember correctly. I still need to try that. Let's see, let's see if we can actually show the difference. But these are the new textures, right? And then I think we should still have the older ones here. But this was the old one. And then, let's see. We kind of put them a little bit side by side. It just looks way better, like more natural, like the the variation. The variation looks uh looks way better as well. It just looks more realistic, you know. I still need to tweak some of the values on it, but I'm happy with it so far. Uh and then also I spend a little bit more time on some of the overhangs and jetties that we were working on last time, and I think this is like a good example of it. So right now, we got like some new brackets, like the structure underneath it is sort of refined as well. Like it's not as chunky as it was before. We now have like bracket, brackets with little wooden wooden nails. Like everything, everything is coming along nicely, you know? Starting to fit together real nice. Then, yeah, I think I added, like, a bit more of these, like, detail bits on some of the pieces, but that's not not that big of a thing. Yeah, quite happy where we're at so far. And I think... It's probably what I spend most of my time on. I think so. And then experimenting with, like, new new buildings, right? Yeah. John, you did a boo-boo yesterday. What happened? Have you seen the Suicide Squad gameplay? Nope. Um, Honestly, like anything DC or Marvel or anything like that doesn't generally interest me at all. Um, I'm probably going to check it out whenever, whenever I have a little bit of downtime. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. What do y'all think of it? Is it looking interesting? Uh, yeah, so that was like a, a recap of what I did like last time. And what I'll... I don't know, let's see. I want to start out with a bit of modeling first. Like, I want to clean up some of these pieces. 
that we can make more floors and have like nicer refined corners. Um, yeah, after that we'll see. Just gonna start there and then we'll see where we end up, shall we? Well, yeah, and if this is your first time being here, welcome, first of all. Happy to have you here. And if you have any questions or if you have any topics that you want to bring up, feel free to just throw them in the chat and then we can... I'll happily discuss it with you. Yeah, I guess uh, the first topic is... Uh, what, what does everyone think about like the Suicide Squad gameplay? Spoil me on it before I'm going to watch it myself. <laughs> the art looks amazing. Hell yeah. It's very generic arcade shooter like Sunset Overdrive. Okay. I mean, yeah. It's kind of weird, right? Because if you say, like, generic arcade shooter, like Sunset Overdrive, like, I would say that Sunset Overdrive is kind of, like, anti-generic. Like, they really tried to do, like, a lot of stuff around, like, movement and made it feel, like, quite unique compared to generic arcade shooter. Like, generic arcade shooter to me is, like, probably Call of Duty, right? Danny's asking, out of curiosity, what's your oldest asset in there? Um, that is a very good question. I... the oldest asset. So, let's just have a look at the screenshots, right? Uh, have a look at the early screenshots. Mm hmm... So this is the first screenshot that I took from the entire from the entire project. I don't know. Oh, I guess yeah. I guess some of the folios that I reused from like a previous project is probably the oldest one. But yeah, like all some of the core components were in here already, right? They just didn't look good. So, I don't know. There's still some of the bags that I'm still using. There's some of the barrels that are that are still looking good. Yeah, probably the barrels, you know? The barrels are something that I haven't really touched in, like, a long time. I would probably say the barrels. Let's see. I'm just going to double this up. I think also with the barrels, it's like a generic asset, right? So once you once you kind of get it down and once it starts to look good, you don't really do adjustments to them anymore because, yeah, they just look good at that point, right? So that's probably why they're like the longest surviving asset in there. Probably. Easy win with the barrels. Hell yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's one of the things, right? Like, I knew that I needed barrels. So, yeah, once once you got them, they're, they're good to go. Just merge all of this. The pivot point is all the way in the back. This is really just like a warm-up to get back into the swing of things, honestly. And we're going to get rid of this. Naming convention is right. I 
I like Sunset Overdrive, but like other games using the same formula. Oh, um, yeah. And there's this with a battle pass as well. Yeah, everyone's doing a battle pass, so I'm not surprised by that at all. That's that's how they keep the money flowing in, right? Seems to be seems to be like just a generic thing that games tend to do these days. Um, yeah, I didn't really like Sunset Overdrive myself, but it's interesting. I'm kind of building ideas of what the game might be now, even though I have no conceptual idea of what it might be. Right? So, interesting. Because if it's like Sunset Overdrive, or if you compare it to Sunset Overdrive, then I'm thinking like a lot of, a lot of movement mechanics, right? And if you then think about the studio that's making it, like they made Arkham, Arkham Knight, right? Which was also about like a lot about movement too. So it kind of makes sense. I don't think I've played that game either, you know? Like the Arkham Knight. So yeah, definitely not up to date on their games, gotta say. E. Arthur, hello Tim, just discovered you two weeks ago, started listening to your videos while working and as a second year 3D student, it helped me a lot. And I would like to thank you for what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. Happy to help, E. Arthur. And glad to know that it's helping you. Oh, that is true, Danny. That is true. The ultimate trim technique that they used. I mean... You're watching it in the flesh right now, right? Like I'm still basing a lot of a lot of it on that too. So yeah, you're right. Extend all of this and emerge these wood pieces into that. Like, you have to target a specific piece to destroy a weapon view. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, curious to check it out. Oh, so this is a floor, and these are jetties, right? So these stick out from buildings. So I'm probably going to add... Do we even need them? Because they stick out so far. And I'm quite happy with the look that we have currently, right? And then if we, if we have the jetty stick out super far, you would probably expect them to be walkways or, yeah, terraces, right? It's not just going to be like a floating... Well, is it? I guess it kind of depends on how fantasy we want to go, right? So... Yeah, no, even these, they still use the small jetties, and then I connect them with a piece of floor. So we could... I don't think we need those big pieces anymore. This actually, I think I testing new collection. I'm just gonna call it like to delete question mark, and then we can put everything in there. The thing that we do need if we want to create something like this is we do need like a walkway or like a bridge section of sorts then i'm thinking about directionality of the planks with that so mm. no 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 let's not let's not get carried away by that just yet I want to see what I actually need to build for, like, these houses, right? 
Because these houses are looking good. So I don't need jetties that stick out like longer than this. So I guess what we can do instead is have a look at... I think I put them under attachments. Like little balcony pieces. But what I'm going to do with these balcony pieces is I'm going to add a, a jetty already attached to it. So that we don't have to... Because you're always... You? Yeah, you're always going to use a piece like this with an accompanying like floor piece. right? So might as well add it in there from the get-go. So that we don't have to fiddle around in the engine and have to do stuff like... Let's see if I have an example this here right where this is a jetty that's sticking out and then we have a porch that's sticking out like that as well might as well combine them into one piece I think And we have like end caps, which is fine. End caps for these things too. I'm thinking if that makes sense. Let's see. Let's play around with it a little bit. Because I'm I'm just not sure at this point if we if we want to add that piece into it. Oh, Route One. What was the what was the boo boo that you made? What was that all about? Add that onto the grid. Uh, porch. Because, like, this is the only other configuration that I could think of where you might want to use a porch, but, like, on the ground floor, right? But I gotta say, then you wouldn't then you wouldn't expect this to be attached to it. So it would probably be something like this instead. Right? Where it's open. Yeah, that makes more sense. And then you could probably because this starts to look like uh, like a, a bit of the market, right? You could probably park something like this underneath it. Or maybe even go for like a full market stall, you know? Just shove that underneath it. Maybe it doesn't even need the market stall itself with like the, the canopy. It could literally just be like a bunch of a bunch of crates. Just a table. Maybe even some quick shelving back of it. Yeah, okay. 
So a couple, a couple of things that we need to do when it comes to this is first we need to cap this off so that this becomes like a standalone piece and that the pillar is on the side of it, right? So that we can put it as like a standalone thing and it doesn't look so awkward with just like a piece of um, empty emptiness hanging over here. And then we'll need to do the same pass that we did on some of the other pieces where we have like nice brackets and it just doesn't look... This doesn't look well constructed yet, right? Compared to compared to some of this where everything starts to fit like nicely together. So we're going to do a pass on that as well. I just need to see... Because we have like a bunch of different dimensions too. Which I don't really want either. I wanna I wanna optimize this as we go along too. Well let's uh let's see if we can do that in the same time. The porch open. Because, yeah, we even have tall pieces, but we don't have tall walls anymore. I think. But I really need to clean some of this up, huh? So that's 1.5 by 4 by 3. And I think this is, this is 2. 2 by 4. That's that's also not two though. Yeah, because this character is like one point eight, so roughly two. So this is almost four meters high, so we probably don't need this. I'm just gonna put that in the two delete stuff. Um In for this thing over here. Got a corner piece. Let's see. The base kit. What are we using for the corners now? What would be your best advice for modularity modeling? Um, testing. You can see it now live, right? Like that would be number one. Like start with like very early blocks and try to test them as soon as possible. And also work to a certain grid. So when I'm constructing pieces, I'm sticking to a grid of like 50. So whenever I'm trying to snap things together, they have to... They have to snap to that grid. Um, I'll see if I can give like an example here. Right? I don't know if these are like old pieces or not. Like you should always be able to like make longer sections out of combinations of like any of these pieces. Right? This is like... So the grid thing is definitely like a... There's definitely like uh that's, that's super important. If you if you figure that out like early, then you have something to work within, right? That's basically the bounding box that you give yourself. So everything I'm building has that in mind. And ideally, the higher you go, the better, right? So I think I started with like a grid of like one meter, so that every chunk was built out of like one meter components. So that means that I can have like a a wall that is, I think this one is like two meters or like, no, this one is three meters wide and then two meters tall and then one and a half meter deep. But once, once I was doing, doing all of this, I think I started with like, um, three wide, two high and two deep. But when I was doing the testing of those modules, it looked like the overhang was too big because two meters was basically too deep. So then I 
then I made the decision to break it off into like half a meter sections so that I could have like one and a half meter instead of two because it just looked better. So that's what I mean with like testing early as well. Like you can only discover those things by putting them in in an area like this and try to build stuff with it, right? And yeah, it doesn't have to look good. It just needs to kind of make sense. So that that would be probably if you're thinking about like modularity modeling, that would be two big things. The other the other additional thing is when you're doing the testing, you need to keep in mind how things are gonna snap together, right? I'll give an, a I'll give an example here of something that technically doesn't work. So let's say I want to make a corner like this, right? Which should be possible. What you're doing is you're introducing like overlap of this pillar here and this pillar here, right? Which is bad in games because then you're doubling you're doubling up things. And that's going to introduce Z fighting, which is where geometry that's really close together is going to fight for which one is going to be rendered first compared to the other one. And that causes visual glitches. So we want to avoid that. So what we can do in this case, and you see that reflected in like a lot of the other pieces, is we have one pillar here, but then we don't have a pillar here. So what happens is if we start doubling them up, the pillar on the left starts to act as a pillar on the right. That's also something to keep in mind. And that's why, again, testing early helps you with all of that. Um, yeah, and maybe last thing, don't go too wide with your kit. Try to keep it to like a minimal amount of stuff before expanding on it. Um... That would also be a good thing. Um, when you talk about testing, do you do you mean testing before texturing? Do you create base meshes and then import them into Unreal and test, or do you texture some of them before? No, don't don't even bother texturing them because you might have to change them anyway. So, I would just get them in as gray boxes. That's also that's also a thing that we do in the industry where, if you want to test something, like we call it the gray boxing or white boxing. Or the block out stage where it's literally just no textures is just more about like proportions and how things match together. And then once you figure that out, then you can start texturing. So don't even think about textures at that point yet. Uh, so let's see here. What's the difference between these two? But that one, that one to the left is deeper. That's like a meter and a half. So what am I doing now? That just a meter? Yeah, okay. Interesting. Yeah, no worries. Feel free to ask away. Um... Can I watch previous parts of this somewhere? Yep, there should be a link to the playlist in the description of this uh, live stream. So this one has been pushed inside of the building. Let's see. Which one is this? This is like half a meter. Okay, so that does mean... Let's go... You can, you can also see this, by the way. 
Um, this is me testing if stuff matches together, not even in Unreal, right? Just to see if things work out. You can do that too. You don't necessarily have to go to the engine every time either. So we do need bigger overhangs. Because this one didn't work. Do we already have one? A one meter by four. Okay, so one meter by four. This this one should work. We only need to add some brackets to this one then. One meter by four. It's a little messy sometime. Hmm. This makes it a little bit confusing. We're we're dealing with like a bit of geometry here that we technically don't need. Gonna down a little bit so now we have half a meter sticking out and then we have a meter sticking out and what i'll do is i'll just it's gonna be lazy I'll make sure that i clean everything up here I'm just going to duplicate the brackets from the other piece as well. Let's have a look. I'll just separate this one out. something wrong something wrong here with these little nail bits I think they're in the geometry right yeah oh no not the disable UV adjustment. <laughs> Your wire and color choices on the UI are so suiting. Uh, thanks, Danny. This is a theme that I made for uh, Beyond Extent, so it has like all the Beyond Extent colors. <laughs> Um, drop the config. Uh, there's actually still one thing that I need to do. I think some of the UV tools are still set to the old one, so I'll need to do that, and then I'll I'll put it in the description or something for the next stream. There's some stuff that still looks ugly, like stuff that I barely use, you know. <laughs> What's that? 
Hmm. Random junk. Let's see if this works. Oh, screwed up the front a little bit. E. Arthur, about your meshes, do you bevel your edges on your low poly or the high polys? Is there any tips for better lighting impact on your meshes? That's a very good question. So this comes back to basically the technique that Danny was talking about before that they used in Sunset Overdrive, which is called the ultimate trim technique. And basically they build a bevel into their texture. Sorry. Uh, so I'll show you what that means in a little bit. Yeah, basically what that means is, let's see. Do we add a thing? You can see this is my trim sheet. Right, so this is my texture that I'm using on all the wooden pieces in my scene. So everything that's made out of wood is just using this one texture. And every every edge of every wood plank basically has a 45 degree angle. And if you then match match two 45 degree angles to each other, they create like a nice bevel if done well. So this means that uh, let's see if we can find like a, a good piece. You can kind of see it here, right? Let me go out of this view first. You can kind of see it here. Like you, it's kind of imitating a bevel. And that's purely because this is just a, a single cube, right? So this doesn't have any bevels in it. And that's literally coming from the texturing. Because if you if you bevel like 45 degree angles on one plank and then you line it up with the bevel of 45 degrees on another plank, together they 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 collide and make like a nice um a nice angle or like a nice bevel. And you can use that on a lot of pieces, right? So you can see that here. Uh sometimes it breaks because you can if you zoom in close. This is where the bevel of the side plank doesn't really match the bevel of the front of the plank. But honestly, for the most part, it works really well. I think it's just, it might be tricky because you basically have to build it up in a way where, um, so the high poly is just literally just 45 degree angles on the high poly, right? But then I do a sculpting pass on top of it to make it look like wood. The issue is there is that you don't want the additional sculpting detail that you add on top of it break that 45 degree angle that you've put as a base mesh in your high poly. Because if you do that, then it doesn't match the 45 degree angle from the other side again. So that's where some of this stuff goes wrong, especially with more, uh, with more detailed sections like this. But overall, it does a really good job. And some of it is also the shading. So this is like a shading issue on the mesh itself rather than like a texturing issue. So I need to fix that still. Same here. But yeah. That is, that is like a very, very cheap way of faking bevels on geometry if you're using trim sheets.
These days, it depends on what you're working with, right? Like there's also the mid poly workflow where you do add a bevel onto your mesh. And then what you do on top of it, you just texture it with titleballs and decals on top of it to make it look unique. That's that's what games like Alien Isolation and Star Citizen and um, we think Doom uses that as well. They kind of use the same techniques. It's a very modular approach of working. Get rid of this and just duplicate this one. Oh, something wrong with the UV names. Just so much. These are just leftovers from when when I was still doing like another technique. The map capital N. There we go. Everything else should still be good. Uh, let's see. We could either we could either cap it off with a bracket on the end, or we would have to build like a, a bracket that works with this. So basically, just stripping out the bracket again from this one. So if we this uh, just making sure that the pivot is in the right location. That bracket so chunky next to it. Hold up, do I already have a bracket? A9 hey, title! How's it going? I guess we could use this bracket and then just like kind of squish it down. Could do that as well. Does that make sense, E. Arthur? Let me know if that doesn't make sense, right? Like, uh, it can sometimes be a very complex thing. You want me to explain? You want me to explain anything? Just let me know. Guess we can just use this as like an end piece because we don't want to see, we don't want to see like these empty things happening here, right? So. Well, technically what we should do is we should clean that up as well. And we'll probably just put some caps on them, inset them a little bit. And then... 
move them back a little bit. This has a seam, select everything. And then just quickly unwrap that, so. Gotta be careful with stacking that I don't destroy anything else. Yeah, it did it. I hate that so much. Stacking with islands. Testing before a lot of medical exams. I hope they go well. There we go. And now even without the end, the end pieces, they kind of look good, right? So we don't have to worry about it if we forget. If we forget to, to add end pieces at a certain point. This is also what, what is known in the industry as making your meshes watertight. And what this does is it gives a lot more flexibility and freedom to the people that are going to use your meshes in the future because they don't have to be worried about like, oh, this has like an open thing. Uh, I'll still need to do some modeling to it. And this also helps uh, level artists in particular when when they have to construct scenes. You want to be you want to make sure that the assets that you're going to be creating can be used in like a 360 manner. Because sometimes, like, uh, we like to go crazy, you know? Like, let's say you have a car and you're never going to see the underside of it, so you decide to leave it out. But what if, like, we're, we're talking about, like, oh, this is a scrapyard, you know? And you want to see a car upside down. Then that's going to be, like, a major bottleneck. Or, like, a, a major, major adjustment for, for someone that wants to use it. Make sure that we clean up this side a bit as well. Shut in a little bit. I should actually... Can I actually do this? Yeah. sticking out but actually I don't think that's gonna look bad at all actually it's like a nice win yeah that doesn't look bad all right nice so these jetties are all good and then we could do the same thing here right like we could take one of these brackets and then add them here if you wanted to to support like the bigger bigger section Do another bracket here yeah nice Okay, so this kit is done. Now we need just need to apply the same sort of thinking to these ones as well. So So we're going to make my sections All of this so basically what i'm doing here is we got like a four meter section and to increase the variation that i can make with them i'm gonna add like a two meter section as well so that if we if we have like a long a long walkway we're not only using the one four meter piece but we can add some some variation into it with uh, the two meter piece even though we're not really going to build that much variation into it yet. Because we're we're literally just using the same geometry. 
gonna be nice to be able to just quickly adjust that later. I don't think we're not gonna we're not gonna deal with corners. Corners are tricky. Plus, we weren't really weren't really that used. I think what we can do instead, if we want to build like those corners, we'll just have to be smart with how we use modular pieces and just rotate them and like not have them into each other, but like have them like slightly above or under each other so that we can still create that feeling without needing the complexity of like 45 degree corners and all that stuff. There's like a quick question to everyone here. What is everyone else working on? Are you working on something cool? This one. We need this piece, right? Just finished the test. How did that go, Nine Title? Remember you saying something about that last time. Danny's tinkering with plasticity. That looks cool. Is that is that a? I haven't looked into it. Is that like an iPad or like a tablet kind of thing? And it looks like it when you were sharing some UI stuff, or like some screenshots from it. Let's see here. So, just gonna close up. Oh, okay. Interesting. Oh no, we have this issue again where I can't move, can't move this at all. The only, the only thing that I know that can solve this is just like re-exporting it for some for some reason. Selected objects. Blah blah blah. Import VX, there we go. Now it assigned like the wrong texture to it as well. Right? Need the wrong texture. Oh no! Ugh. I had the wrong thing selected. Okay, let's get rid of all this. There we go. I swear I got that issue today too. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I've had that issue, like, since ages ago. And then I kind of forgot that some meshes had it. And I looked at it, couldn't really find anything, like, of relevance, you know? Like, a lot of people... A lot of people seem to have a comparable issue, but it never ended up being the one that, that I was having. So I never found, like, the solution to it. The only solution is like I just did, right? Like re-importing that mesh. That's the only thing that fixed it for me. It's freaking awkward, but hey. You got the job. Congratulations.
yeah, it's a. Uh... Oh, it's been a, a a month long. Yeah, that's a that's a long one. Messed up a little bit. Get cracking again. Uh, okay, so select sharp edges. Let's make sure. I just select anything. Yeah, it's close enough. These these couple ones. We don't need those. Kind of fine. Hey George, how's it going? Oh, so Danny, you didn't figure out anything, anything on your side either. I was hoping that you could help me. Come on. <laughs> it's weird because it, it's also tricky to look up. You know, it's like, oh, can't move vertices. It's like, yeah, a lot of people give like very, very rightfully so, but like very generic answers, right? It's like, oh, are you in edit mode? Oh, are you doing this? And it's just like, yeah, 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 I've been doing all that stuff. But it's just, it's weird. Answer is to give up. Okay. Thanks, Danny. I couldn't move the whole thing at all for some reason. Yeah, I've had that with certain meshes too. I think... I don't know if this one still has it. Oh, I think I fixed it on most of it. But yeah, you see, like, this one still has it, right? So I go into edit mode, I select everything, and then I try to move all the geo inside of it. But it's not moving the planks. It's only moving the supports and, like, all the decals that I added on top of it. And there's... Yeah, just weird. But I mean, yeah, I'll just have to re-import and re-export that one once we get to it, but not too bothered. Okay, let's make a little corner. These planks are super short, though. What I might do... There's no need for these planks to be so short as they are now. Um, no, I can leave... I can leave the nails. What I'll do is I'll just... Lead this. And just... All the way out here. Do the same thing here with this one. better before tweaky baby transform is locked for object um no it's it's weird right because it's in it's in edit mode so like there, there were a bunch of people like nothing nothing is locked here right um let's see have anything in here Pin, like I was looking at pinning too, but pinning, pinning doesn't have like the, that power annotations doesn't have anything. I don't know. No, it doesn't have anything. It's, it's not that either. Yeah. But th thanks for shouting it out though, GeForce. It's it's a very weird and obscure thing.
very weird and obscure thing that only happens on like a couple of things. And it's literally only like a couple of assets. I think these ones, the ones that I'm working on right now, they have the most issues with it. Let's see. Let's see on this one. Yeah, this one. It's only the planks too. This one doesn't have it. Have it. Oh, oh, oh. It's not good. This one doesn't have it either. So this one still has it, but only the planks, right? It's weird. Weird, weird, weird. But I've honestly, I've honestly taken Danny's advice on it already, and I've just given up. Like, it's like... I can't be too bothered. Select a tool on the side and check under the options, but that's, uh... You mean this tool, right? So let's have a look. Wait, is this one? This one's still broken. Yeah. Tool on the side and check the options. Yeah. Let's see, vertex data, vertex groups, tape keys, UV keys. I don't think it's going to be this, but... No. Yeah. Weird stuff. Uh, what are we doing here? We're making a corner, right? Let's duplicate linked. And then... gonna do it like this appreciate all the help though but I've been sometimes I'll get into them into the mode of like okay now I'm gonna fix it and then I'll look for it for like an hour and then I'll give up again it's just I'm, I'm so done with it at this point like it's so much easier to just re-import it No, I don't have anything instanced either. Like this, that is the original mesh. And like, even, even if I were to duplicate it, it still has that lock selection as well. So it's, yeah, very, very weird. But like, even if I make it like a, a single, uh, what's it called again? Like a single mesh, right? Where you delete like all the instances and all that. Still doesn't do it, so... It's a very weird. Uh, what are we doing here? So, we actually don't want that here. We want it here. I'm gonna, gonna delete all of these divisions. Makes it a little bit easier to Just Wait, can't we do a thing where we just say like hey uh limit the dissolve yep <laughs> mm, I don't think I tried that George I'll try that maybe later on good shout Honestly, don't even know if I tried that. Kind of forgotten about like all that stuff. Uh, 
Um, okay. Take all of them. Uh, need to move this one. Up one space as well. Just trying to see where everything lines up, right? Because this is going to be a corner piece that needs to line up with this. A little bit messy. We can make them all into like 45 degree corners. There's a weird thing happening here where this side is a little bit overreaching. Like it's a little bit too long. Which is interfering with the corner that I'm trying to make here right now. Good. We'll have to do the same thing here as well. Make them 45 degree corners. Remove this bevel at the same time. We don't need that at all. Technically, a little bit messy, but we'll get there. The only thing that we need to do now is this. It's in the beginning. Is it better to assemble the model in Blender or to export pieces to Unreal and combine them there? It depends. It depends what you want to do. Um, both, both have their advantages and disadvantages, right? Um... Trying to think if there's like a clear-cut way saying this. 
um because there there is the performance side of things and there's also the the assembly side of things right where building stuff like a very intricate manner in unreal is still somewhat limited compared to like a modeling program so if you're making like really intricate stuff it might be better to just do it in blender and then just export it as like one piece to unreal um that being said you can also you can also make modular buildings like i'm doing in in the engine here and then use Unreal's modeling tools on top of it to make them look a bit more unique, which is something that I'm going to experiment with in the future as well. Um, as for the optimization side of things, if if you just have like one one building with like a couple of materials assigned to it on it, that's that's probably going to be way cheaper to render than like I don't know fifty different different pieces with like a bunch of materials slapped on it even even if those materials are the same ones right so there's uh it's a complex thing it's honestly what i would what i would look at if you're just building stuff for yourself and if you're not not thinking about selling or making a game or anything like that just do what's easier for you that's like the quickest answer that i can give to that question Let's see, we have our white grid line here, so I probably wanna probably wanna move everything just so slightly up. And do the same thing with all of this stuff here. Squish it all down a little bit. And maybe even this here. I hope that made sense, Tree Force. Let me know if there's anything specific that you're looking for. Need to adjust some of this. We rotate this, do that there. I mean, it is overlapping a little bit. Let's see if we can solve some of that. The thing that I do enjoy about like making something medieval is that it's so forgiving. You know, like almost all the mistakes that you make with like this sort of stuff, for example, it just makes it look better because it makes it look so much more handcrafted. So it's almost like you're making mistakes, but they add to the character of everything. Like quite handy. I think it's time to merge these two. Uh, let's apply. Let's flip the normals. Just them two. 
And now we can make like individual adjustments without having to worry about like the instancing of the objects anymore. You've made walls in Unreal with the modeling tools, added some geometry with displays, and now adding wooden pieces into the project to make variation for practice and potentially portfolio. Uh, yeah, if you're doing that way, that's totally fine. And it seems it seems to me that Unreal is like really keen on getting you to do more of that stuff in the future as well. So you could almost see it as like getting ahead of the crowd and like getting used to the, the tool set that they're building. Which can be to your dis to your advantage. Because, yeah, with the tool set that they're already building, for sure, they want you to stay as much in, like, you spend as much time in the engine as possible. Instead of having to go to, like, another software. Like, a little bit application stuff going on here. Hey, Dimitrios! I was wondering where I can find part 1 to 3 for the series. So it should be in a link in the description of this of this, uh, this video itself, this live stream. You can find the link to, to the playlist there. It should have all the videos. Yeah, this is looking good. These two brackets are weird because they're so close to each other and they look exactly the same. There's also... What is happening there? Did I accidentally... What happened here? Oh. Huh. Mentally move like a face from it. Hmm. Bracket is always there, right? So I don't think we need brackets on this one, but I'm just gonna. Thank you, found them all. No worries, have fun. Might not be as delicate as other 3D software, but it's faster when you get the hang of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, where, where speed comes from with that stuff is that you don't have to move between software anymore, right? That's the big selling part of it. That's also the same thing for me, right? When I want to sculpt something, I don't have to go to ZBrush anymore. I just do it in Blender. Which makes it so much easier for me to use. Um, we're ever going to go... Are we ever going to go to, like, a full modeling toolkit inside of Unreal Engine? That depends on how good they support it. Right? Because it, I, I feel... I feel what they're trying to do right now is they're trying to build a tool set because they know that with Nanite and with Mega Scans and all that kind of stuff, people are looking for a tool set to build stuff in the engine. But I don't think they're ever going to go as deep and as granular as you need to build like 3D models from scratch. That's my gut feeling. I think they're just making a tool set for people that want to quickly do some adjustments, but they're never going to go as deep as like a modeling software, I think. 
because then they also need to support that and like build that up and ugh, that takes a whole bunch of time and like a dedicated team again who knows i might be wrong Okay, let's get this in. Gonna copy paste the naming convention of this, so this is one by four, right? Two assets to export. What do y'all think about it? Like, what do you think the future of Unreal Engine is going to be? Maybe that's that's a bit too broad of a topic, but I'm curious what people think about it. So we've got one by four, two by four. I'm not going to do these corners anymore, so I'm just going to delete those. So one by four, one by two. Maybe one by two. Yes. Maybe two by two. It's like a two by two corner then, right? That's the same thing. Probably not going to use that. Where's my little corner piece? So... Pity one by four corner. This is why we use a grid. So this is a new piece, I think. We only have like half a meter. Okay. So what we'll do for that one instead is I'm going to change the naming convention because medieval doesn't make sense. And a lot of these things still have like medieval in the name for, for no good reason. Ports. Four. Now we should be able to just quickly assemble its walkways. They look good from the underside. I feel they should focus more on Mixer with baking stuff. Maybe somehow merge it into Unreal. You can you can already bake stuff in Unreal. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Mixer Mixer is a different thing, yeah, because that's more like texture creation, right? Um, but you can already bake into molding tools. I don't know how robust it is. I use it for baking vertex data. But you can already use it to bake textures as well. High to low poly even, I think. I don't know how robust it is, but... And how much control you have. OK, 
Okay, so we got these jetties in. I think that kit is good to go then. We don't need this one anymore, so we're going to move that to delete. This one we don't need. Floor. Let's have a look at some ref, shall we? I collected some quick stuff earlier today from like the Witcher and some other things. I don't know what I want to make with these. Like maybe a bridge could be interesting. Let's think, do we need a floor? I guess so, because we do use it here. Okay, so the floor is not not gonna delete that. I can stay. Stay. This one can go. Got this one. Trying to do a little bit of cleanup at the same time, you know. Walls. We got stairs. Like a wooden wall would be really cool to make. Something like that. Because we're going with like the whole early medieval age vibe anyway. Let's try it. Let's let's give it let's try something new. Um, let's grab the building kit. Let's see, we got some stuff in here that we can use. I'm gonna grab like a couple of things here. See if we can make like a quick. Quick wall section. Ah, uh, poke. Look. Hello, Ravindra. How's it going? Don't want them to be like really smushed inside of each other, so. Honestly, I just wanna I just wanna see what this looks like, you know. That as a pivot point. Uh, wall underscore wood. Section, we don't need that. Uh. Let's have some fun, shall we? Let's see if we can just... Pour that into Ben's blueprint that I made. Have a look. Where are we at? I think there's still something wrong with this, so this might go terribly wrong. 
to the pieces. We have a wall folder? No. Sports, where did you go to? Walls. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Sense. Oh. No. Do it. Let's go. Oh. Hmm. The rotation is wrong, right? Swarm Origins. To a look. Oh my god, looks so trippy. That didn't change anything at all. I keep forgetting the rotation that we need for this as well. I'm making it easy on myself. Yeah, something goes terribly wrong with this one. It's not that I didn't predict it, you know? Let's see. That's what you get when you make blueprints yourself, you know. Why is it doing that? Why does it have spikes all of a sudden over here? What? You're right. I'm so confused with the scale now. Yeah, that makes sense. So no scale variation because both of them are set to one. Makes sense. It's blueprint time. Uh, scale. Script. Hit the bounding box, yeah. Is taking the X value. That be the X value? <laughs> Technical artists at work here, you know. 
not. So now it's taking the X value. Okay, so... I think this was right, right? Because the forward axis is probably... I think it's the Y axis in Unreal. But it means that if we rotate this... Oh god. I recompiled all the fences. So there's gonna be like literal thousands of them now. Oh no. Yeah, I might have crashed in real. No! Yeah, anyway, how's everyone else's day going? <laughs> oh, God. Well, I'm going to keep waiting on that. We'll just do something else. And in the meantime, we'll just wait for that to recompile. Or, like, at least try to. Uh, so what's uh, what else is on the list? Finding the impulse to buy during our station sale. What are you looking to buy, Danny? Because I've never... Let me think. I don't think I've ever bought anything from the art station. Oh no, that's not right. Like, I bought, I bought like an alpha. Or like wood. That's it. I think that's the only thing I've ever bought from like... Station, I think. Here we got some nice storage places. I've been playing like a bit of uh, Plague Tale as well before I went on a holiday, so got like a bunch of inspiration slash ref from all of that. Oh, this is a nice shelf. It's quite cool. Oh, do you want to see a sneaky thing that they do on a uh, Plague Tale? You see these things? Like these holes? They're not holes, they're just like normal decals that they put on top of it. <laughs> I love sneaky things like that in games. I think I, I got like a close-up somewhere from... Uh... Let's see if I can find it. Oh yeah, over here. It's like a normal decal that they put on top of it. Interesting. All the sneaky ways the games trick you. Usually PDFs. Or tutorials or scripts. What was the last thing you bought, Danny? Can you recommend me something? Oh, we got Unreal working. Let's have a look. Why is it squishing it like that, though? Go we'll pivot. So this is X. That's Y. Are we just completely wrong on this? What's happening? Hey, Elias, how's it going, man? Normal decals for the win. Oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah, it's smart, you know? 
Like that's basically that's basically what uh what Star Citizen does, right? Like they add all their decals, or even like the latest Doom, they add all their like panel lining, all the intricacies of the models is just through like decals on top of it. It's really cool. So now I've added it on the X, right? But what I'm doing in the script, I do it in the script. This is my script. I'm taking from the Y. So I'm I'm taking the bounding box from whatever I give it. And then I break I break the Y value. So okay, so it was right then. Because now the Y value is only like a small bit, right? It's just a diameter of like one one of the pillars. That means that if I want to take the bounding box, I need to take the X X one. So I had it right before. Why wasn't it working then? I'm doing this. That doesn't add anything. Oh, Matthias Alvetra's modeling of a mech. 300 pages of how to how to model freeform in Max. Yeah, yeah, the stuff that he does looks really cool. So that's a good buy. Just all about Max. And now it's squishing it. Right? There's something funky going on here that I, I don't have the capability of solving that now because it works. It works predictably on these ones, so I don't know why it's not doing that. Is this is the main scale? Is that fucked up on these ones? Let's have a look. No. Weird. Space between is fifteen, so. Okay, let's try one last thing before I move on to something else. So, wood. Where's my wall? Ooh. Yeah, what if I plug that one in here? Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> nah, that's the same thing. Interesting. So something does go wrong in like the bounding box. No, don't do that. Misclick. Who bounds? Yeah, the bounding box is there though. Hold up, I think I can know what it might be. Hmm. Oh, that's not it either. Interesting. See, so show pivot. And what was it? Alt P. What? Oh, I'm gonna play. Oh. 
Okay, interesting. So... Means that it should be... This way? Instead? Is the number of fences regulated by you or the length of the curve? The length of the curve. So what I'm what I'm doing now is I I take the bounding box of of the asset that I put into it, right? And then I use that as like a number to divide the entire spline by. And then it knows how many fences to add, right? That's what I'm doing now. It's just I think it's just screwing up because of the rotation of it. Because that's why I'm looking at this one here. And you can see that the X is pointing away from the model. Where in here, the X is pointing with the model. So, let's see if this did anything. Mm-hmm. Nah, it's still doing it. Oh, weird. Also doing it over there. Oh. Yeah. That is so weird. Oh well. I'm not gonna bother with it anymore. I'll uh, I'll have to do that off stream then. Try to figure it out. Cause it works with other walls. Like these ones look nice. These fences look good. With the tall ones, it doesn't work. Maybe the pivot has to be reset. Don't know if it fucks up if it's exported with a rotation. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing each time, right? Like each time I apply the rotation, so it like resets itself I guess we can quickly quickly check we show the pivot yeah so now the X is following the mesh itself right so that's actually what we want that seems to be working the bounds seem to be working as well It basically looks the same as these ones, I guess. Like a random fence that we're using already. Yeah, so like if we look at it this way, X is going that way, Y is going straight out there. That's what is happening with this one as well. Then the bounds, they look the same. Yeah, that's weird. I can't really think of what might be causing that at the moment. Interesting. I'll need to check that later then. Yeah, it's a good shout though. Got no idea what that is. Moving on to something else. Let's see. All this polish pass on the trees, for solar saplings, new fences, smaller huts. Welcome to the chaos of working on personal work with me. It was going to be a chaotic stream anyway. Because I didn't know what the hell we were going to do today. Let's have a look.
I feel like maybe we should switch it up a little bit and just do do a little bit of level art and like see if we can make um maybe what we could do is just start like a new level and just start making like the entrance to town and just start splitting them up into like polished uh polished areas already i think that could be a fun one Fail to save. Uh oh. Yeah, the forest is getting there, right? The forest is definitely getting there, including. Loading torches and everything, you know? I think this is the area that I've spent the most time on already. Like, this is like a carpenter area. So, uh... Yeah, this is definitely getting along quite well. I think what I, what I still need to do is just do, like, a pass on, like, some of these trees and some of the smaller assets, you know? And, like... Really push them to the next level. In general, start, it starts getting there, you know. Let's see if we can turn it into... We do. Morning. Give it like a little bit of time to refresh. Yeah. Definitely getting there. Mm -mm. Oh, what is... Valid payload? What the hell? Uh oh! Bye bye! Feel a crash coming on. Oh, yeah, one of the things that we need to look at is uh, make some nice wild flowers as well so that we can break up. Let's have a look. Oh, well, we can't restore them anyway. It's not connected to source control. Some nice wild flowers so that we have some, some variation in between the grass as well. Something that would be really nice to look into. Just make sure well, everything loaded in first. Everything is still looking nice. What do we do here again? So half a meter jetties. That's what we did today. Jetties. Oh, well, let's drag them in again. I guess we can make use of this and just get rid of the names. Why 
Why am I selecting four pieces? What's happening here? Okay. Just going into the normal. Such a freaking chaotic stream today, but hey. Let's do... Oh, we're playing, playing Atomic Heart. Night title. How is it? Let's see. Saving complete. Cool. Janky but interesting ideas. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I don't like it looks cool. Like it has some interesting ideas like you said, but I don't think I don't think I'll buy it. Looks a bit too janky for me. Just from just from the game, the gameplay itself, right? Not even watching any of the reviews just yet, but it does have a certain level of jank to it. You know what I'll do? I'll probably Just delete everything? There's like a whole bunch of junk in here still. Move to Oh. Oh, okay. Fair enough. We don't want to remove the landscape either. Okay, so now we're kind of working with like a, a clean, clean-ish file, right? Just gonna do some, uh, some world building. It's just start from scratch. We got, got our lighting still set up. We got the camera still in here. I'm gonna start building some stuff. Let's go. Flatten everything out. Need to remove those uh, landscape splines as well.
That looks so awkward. All that stuff. So weird why it still leaves like all this jank behind. What's happening here? Oh, I see. I think I only removed like the the parts in between, not actually the the points. Okay, so select all control points, that gets rid of everything. Cool. Okay, we're good to go. Then, start building the wall. Technically, could have kept the wall that I had, but we're here now. Starting fresh. What is that? Tall section of wall. I think what would, keep, what would be cool is that the wall is still being built up. Get like a nice, like an interesting visual to go for. Let's actually see if we can Build like an interesting structure over here. Maybe go for something. Or like a watchtower along the wall. Actually, we're kind of we're kind of going against what we what we set up before with this with this project, though. Because it was always, it always supposed to be like early medieval times, right? So stone, stone castles weren't that prevalent yet. Hey, sometimes you just want to have fun too, you know? These UVs like ass still, but that's fine. Let's see how quickly we can build something up. What I could technically do is start making more use of blueprints, right? Or like pack level actors. Maybe, maybe that's what I'll what I'll do. So I'm gonna minimal Z. That's fine. Um, the entrance. Oh, that's just a level. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I saved I saved the level in the wrong place. We'll need to. 
fix that in a bit. So building stone tower. And I'll probably call it square because it could be nice to make a round one as well. And then that allows us to just get rid of this. And then just put that in place and just make it the same thing. So now they're instanced, right? I can just start building this up. And then once I commit, it will propagate to the other side as well. looking good this wall is probably too tall though um let's see if we can add a floor or something It wouldn't do this. I'm not going to put wood on top of it. But what I might do is I'll, I'll probably use them as like a placeholder. And then we can change them up afterwards. Corner. I don't know. We're going with it for for now. I'm actually curious to see what it looks like if we then add like wooden walls on top of this. It'll be quite interesting visually. That's uh We don't have the right dimensions though. <laughs> Real tight. That's a good question. Can you put multiple blueprints into pack level actors? I tried that and it broke the blueprints. Um, I tried it, but not, not in depth. And for me, it worked, right? So you could add like um. The the only thing that you have to be careful of is that you can't add blueprints that have lights or. See, there was some other stuff though. Like, I'm, I'm sure about lights, because if you put lights in a packed level actor, then it flips out. It, you can't add lights to it. So, if you're doing something with, like, candles, you still need, you, you still need to use, like, a normal blueprint, like you would, you would before. So, that's definitely, like, a limitation. Actually have something for these dimensions, or I need to... Uh, maybe I'll need to widen widen the thing here, like the tower itself. It's a tall section. And maybe I could technically do something like this. Then here. I think so. It's worth a try. Yeah, no worries. No worries, real high.
like I said before, like I didn't I didn't use them that much, right? I just tried them. I tried stacking them inside of each other and then um using them that way, and that actually worked fine. You could even break them by like multiple levels, right? So you could say like, hey, only break the main blueprint. And then keep the other blueprints intact, which is like really useful. Let's see. starts to look more like a house then right so i don't really want to do that and i don't think i have square roofs anyway yeah for this i'll need to look at some castles actually see what they do with it because i know that they have like slits for like crossbow fire and all that stuff but Gonna go this for now. It does feel really tall. It is true though, Danny. Like there's a lot of castles here and I have I have a lot of pictures that I've that I've taken from the years like when we visited castles and like fortifications and all that stuff. The only thing, the only thing that's a shame, it's so hard to find stuff about wooden castles, right? Because obviously none of them are around anymore apart from like somewhere in like Norway, I think. They still have like a part partly recreated one, but That will be awesome. And what can we do here? Yeah, so I guess for this stuff we would need like floor. That's where these things would come in? This is chunky though. Maybe... So I guess this this answers the question of if we still need floor, and the answer is yes, we do. <clears throat> yeah, like visited a lot of them in Italy as well. A lot. It's so nice. I like some railings over here. That one, is this one the right one? Yep. It's feel really tall though. Like, maybe... Wait, let's actually let's actually figure out some dimensions, right?
Let's nerd out on some castle wall heights. Yeah, this is cool. I love this stuff. Build some of that. Depth. And at a height of around 30 to 40 feet. What is that? 30 feet in meters. 9 meters. So let's say 30 to 40. Let's say 10 meters then. Right? Um, And these parts are... What is that? Four, four by three. It's four by three. So that means. Oh no. Even taller. Oh my god. Don't really want to make him that tall, though. Again, I'm still, I'm still thinking about like making it like early medieval age, right? So they're probably gonna be more modest. Kind of fortifications. Where, well, I guess technically we could use these, right? We already have them. And then we'll need to we'll need to figure out the 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 tower structure itself. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Castle walls are higher than city walls. Very true. Didn't make this modular, so let's fix that real quick. Yeah, because even in the picture that I was just looking at, right? Like the little little palisade around the city wall looked smaller. Would make sense. Okay. Put that in. How tall are these ones then? Because they look way too tall now. Let's see, do I still have the link open? Yeah, even this, right? I mean, this is the worst picture ever, but... I guess... Don't we, don't we have like pictures from Novigrad, from The Witcher or anything like that in here? Get some quick inspiration. Yeah, something like this, right? That's like, let's say two meters tall. Like if that is like the average person height in that time. Let's say around two meters. It's like a rough calculation. That means that this stuff... Make it a bit taller. Let's say something like that. And then the tower to compensate would probably be something like this. And we can kind of move some of this stuff down as well. And you do want the, the gate to be like the center of importance, right? So we're probably going to make that a little bit taller. Oh, that's a great shout, Dubrovnik. Yeah. Is 
shame we we didn't go there. Like we went to Croatia like last year. We didn't go there. It was a little bit too far. Actually, let's have a quick browse through some pictures. Mm -hmm. Where am I looking? Mass storage pictures. I'm trying to think if if there were like any good ones, like from the walls, right? Because I do have like a bunch of them from like old city centers, and like a lots of like. References like this, you know, like old, old floor work, like old wall work is so good. It was like a part of the old entrance. I'll need to I'll need to have a look at later. Let's see. Let's do a little bit of cleanup here, right? So we probably don't want to have a stone gate here. Probably gonna make like a, a quick placeholder wooden one. Let's see something like that. Let me know. Rotation here is so screwed. I've been building everything in like this rotation, so it doesn't really make sense for me to just abandon that now. Even though it was for a good cause to get the blueprints working. Let's see. I'm just gonna make like a quick a quick frame. Again, this is just placeholder stuff, right? So I'm not I'm not looking to make anything like really final yet. I just want to get something in quick so that I know that at a later point I need to refine this little gate that I just made. UV. Find everything with that, and then we'll just push this to the middle. Uh, gate. Gate wood. Zero one. Get that in quick. Make the city walls. Bam, that works. 
and we'll see. We'll probably this somewhat higher so that this aligns, right? And some pillars in place. And we'll just break all of this up by just moving individual pieces just a little bit. Okay, let's add some more city walls. Should we keep building on the grid? I'm just going to quickly extend that over to the left and right. Then let's see if we can just fill in the center of it real quick. Get some pre-built houses. Little storage shed. Early development of a town, right? So everything is kind of... It's freaking scattered all over the place still. No proper structure yet. Well, there's gonna be there's gonna be like main arteries into the city, right? but it's not gonna be like fully built up yet. Also, see if we can this up The wall might be... Hmm. Probably want to have like a higher section of the wall here. That people getting up into the towers are a bit protected. Right? Let's see what we need to do to get these things working first. align a little bit so satisfying when stuff snaps together occasionally like you can't you can see that not everything snapping together but that's the weird thing right like i might move this i might move this by like a couple of increments and then switch it back to the original grid that i had it on 
And then it's basically moving along like a completely different base grid now. Which makes it really confusing. If you're working with some of this stuff. Because now... Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't align anything. So... Now it's moving 50... 50 Unreal Engine units compared to the new grid that it's set on. Which might not work work out with some pieces. We'll have to go in with like a smaller setting like 10 and then just switch it up. We're going to push all this stuff a little bit back. You know, I actually forgot to do is make it like a, a nice and important place. We can do that by just raising it up so that you go on top of a hill. And we'll just have to. Again. So we have it. Do another pass again. little bit higher not that high what I'm doing now is I'm using this ramp right because now that I have this ramp here I can just say like hey look this needs to be the zero point and that's probably gonna be something like this oh, I want to do it all the way in the back though Hey, yes, I got a question. When working on big projects, what source control management do you use? Which one do you like the best? So, uh, if we're like the ones that are stereotypically used in the industry are Perforce, right? That's probably the most well known one. Um, but I've also used other ones like Tortoise SVN and uh, Helix, I think, is also another one. But. I would say those are more for like big corporations, right? Like if you have like a ton of people working on like the same thing. Um, what we actually use is called Plastic. It's a uh, Plastic SCM. And that's actually great for like smaller teams. Um, and it's also, it also has, the big benefit of it is it also has like a, like an artistic friendly version. So it basically stripped out like all the functionality that you don't need if you're an artist. And they basically just, yeah, make it super simple to use. That's the one that we use for all of our team challenges as well. So if we put like people together in teams of five, that's what they all use too. Super handy.
Yeah, no worries. Uh-oh, I think we're missing... Yeah, we missed some pieces here. Paint. Yeah, plastic is, is the one that I would recommend if you're doing, like, any small projects with other people, or... I mean, yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be small, right? If you're looking for something artistic, like, artist-friendly, that's the one that I would use. Because currently, I think we have five teams of five, so 25 people on it right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you if you have like plastic, like it's literally just like a one click thing in Unreal. Um, not all the functionality works. Like you can't you can't really look at your uh, workspace history inside of Unreal when using plastic because they don't they don't support that feature. Um, but again, like as an artist, you don't really use that, right? And if you really need it, you can still go back to uh, your non-artist version of plastic and use that one instead. So that you have like full control if you want that. <clears throat> because we we actually tried a couple of ones when we were doing the team challenge in the beginning. And I think we, we had Git, GitHub for like a long time. But it was it was so annoying if you were working with bigger files, uh, and that's why we eventually switched over to plastic. It just made it way easier to work with like big files because you don't need to add like a bunch of bunch of functionality to Git. Uh, it just kind of worked out of the box. So yeah, super nice for that. The place of importance. People are coming up here. Look. What other types of houses do we want to... Here. Probably make like a small marketplace, you know? Here. And we can also make it a little bit prettier. So we got like the main road coming in. And you got people connecting these spaces here. Some, some grass. Yeah, probably. Look here, I'm gonna make like a, a quick little perimeter.
I don't want to build like high high houses in this area. Like that's what I'm thinking currently. We have like a whole bunch of these houses, right? I don't I don't want to make them like this is going to be more like a village kind of situation. Currently thinking. Need to make sure. Have all the things that we need. See if we can clean like a quick. Little forest area around it. It's really kind of blocking it in. Like the road. Like a little bit of a curve. Uh Trying to think so. Yeah, I think we, we did it with the foliage painter before. Did we? Or did I do it with the procedural tool? Let me just have a quick look. Oh, what? Okay. Uh. Let's cheat and go to our other level. Let's see. Yeah, instance foliage actor. Yeah. Interesting. Because it removed all the foliage actors, so is that like embedded in the instance foliage actor then? Okay. Because right now, if I go to foliage mode, it doesn't have any foliage in here, so... Interesting. Okay, I didn't know that it was linked in, like, a layer. Oak. Where did I save that? Oh, that's still in test. This is probably going to be way too dense in the beginning. Yup. Definitely is. So, is it applied on all of them? Seems to. Okay. Let's see, all these trees. These are all small trees.
Just having a look to see if we can have like some interesting patterns going on. I think this is going the right direction. The only thing that I don't like about this is a thousand. But there's a lot of medium stuff happening, so we'll have to dial that down a little bit as well. Like I guess small. So if we change that. looking a little better oh and this is actually like very important if you're working with foliage especially in unreal engine 5 there's a little checkbox that you have to tick i'll do that in a little bit so yeah let's say for this this section for instance i think uh effect distance field lighting that's what you want to check on like every bit of foliage that has like a large impact on your shadows basically so it goes from looking like really flat to actually casting shadow look at that so much better compared to wait let me let me actually show it properly right so let's make it camera so this is it without it and then you get this with it looks so much fuller it's just like a little tick box that you need to check here get like nice areas like this gonna in everything Let's see to soften up the terrain a little bit as well blending is a little bit all over the place too but that's fine it's just all about iteration you know don't do everything all at once no we actually want to sculpt instead see what we can do with ramp right so we have a ramp coming down here then let's say we have another ramp uh, oh actually yeah how it's carving out the terrain that's looking really nice want
I'm gonna smoothen everything out a little bit. Let's see. So what can we do with the erosion tool? Well, just pushing it down. A little bit of noise on the landscape. Hi Vivek! How's it going? Welcome to the chat. We don't want that much foliage inside of it, right? It's like a safety concern if you have it near the wall as well. <clears throat> would actually be cool i'm looking at this screenshot from the witcher where they have like this large bridge coming in actually i like that it has like a striking visual you know maybe we could we could kind of do the same and like flatten the section out Make this like a bridge. Yeah, so this is like a ditch that they dug. And this has like a bridge going over it. Let me see if I can quickly throw something down. Looks more impressive visually, huh? Yeah. 
Like, where is it going? But you know what? I've been streaming for three hours, and I do need to take it a little bit chill because we just got back from holiday, right? So I'm probably gonna leave it here. Gonna gonna see what I need to do. Gather myself after the stream as well because there's a whole bunch of stuff that I post planned to do today. It kind of fell through, so uh, that's uh, stream has been very chaotic. But uh, I thank you nonetheless for being here. So I'll uh, I'll be back next week, next week Wednesday with uh, Working Progress Wednesday, where I give feedback to to everyone from the community, and then also on Friday I'll be back to do some more art, hopefully, uh, hopefully a bit less chaotic than this time. And uh, I'll I'll put some stuff out there. I'll see what I can do after the stream as well. And uh, maybe maybe get a proper plan in place, right? Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And astronaut, oh hey, how are you, man? <laughs> Doing good. <laughs> I'm I'm just about to leave though, so it's a bit of awkward timing, you know. But we'll speak soon. I'll be back next week twice so wednesday and and friday and then we'll continue working on this as well all right thank you so much everyone for being here and i'll speak to you soon bye, -bye.